Um, today we are taking the brushed system out of the Traxxas K10 and we are going with this Hobby Wing brushless. Um, this is the 2100 KV uh, Axe 540. Here's a part number if you need it. And uh, so I've already done a few things. I've taken some of the screws out to make the video not so long. I've also taken the motor in ESC and kind of cleaned it up with some zip ties, put the Traxxas connector on the end of the ESC. So let's get started. Um, I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can look and not have to watch me the whole time from afar. All right, two, 2.0 millimeter hex. So you start with removing the two screws on the brushed ESC. Um, there's three screws across here that hold the motor in place. And then what makes it easier if you pop this open, there's two screws in here so you can get this battery tray folded out of the way. Um, there was a zip tie here that was clipped off so that obviously we can make the video faster. So we'll start by removing the receiver box cover so we can get down in here save this you need this this is the um, waterproof gasket and there's two right here that hold the wires down and it's has also got some closed cell foam in here to keep the water tightness abilities if that's what you want to call it this should come right off. So this is what I was talking about. It's got some closed cell foam in here. All your wires run into here and they plug into the actual receiver. Uh, we're leaving the TQI receiver in it for now. In a later video, we'll show you what this is gonna get swapped over to a Spectrum so I can run it on my DX5C. Um, I've got all my cars on one uh, transmitter. So you'll chase this wire down which is coming back here which is your channel one give it a little wiggle and a tug it'll pop right out So that is your ESC wire. Like I said, there's three screws here on your cover. Oh, that pops right off. And your whole um, motor mount comes out. So that is the motor and ESC out. So we'll set the car over to the side. And we are going to be taking this pinion off and putting it on the new car or on the uh new motor i believe it's a 1.5 break it free always use hand tools when you're working with this stuff you don't ever want to strip these grub screws out they're real temperamental um what i like to do is it comes factory with some blue loctite on it um but since you did take it out, we're gonna hit it with just a little extra. Give that a little smear. Run it back through just a, t a tad. Then you've got on the shaft of the motor, you've got a flat spot where your grub screw is gonna sit. And you wanna get that lined up just right. Come in here, tighten this down snug. I like to stand it up so I can get a little bit more oomph. Don't want to over tighten and strip that screw out. And then here we are taking a two millimeter, nope, two and a half. So with the TRX4, you've got this motor plate and it's got different letters here for different um, pinion and spur sizes. So with this one being the high trail edition, it's already got the factory lift kit on it. So it's set in B and which would be B over here, but it's not marked. So you want to maintain that when you come over to the new motor so that you don't have any fitment issues. Um, 
the factory regular non trail rated editions uh trx fours that don't have the lift kit on it it's in a different position so then we're going to take this one come over here and line the holes up where are we at we got b and b Just get it just snug until you get the other one in and get it lined up straight. Just don't want to over tighten it with this plastic and crush the plastic or strip the screw threads or the head of the uh, hex. Alright, so that's it. That is the pinion swap. Brushless is going over here. We are going to bring the car back, the truck, I'm going to call it a truck, and what I will do first is come back in here and set this back down. You can see the pinion probably going to give it a 180 flip to make it a little easier. All right, motor's going back in now. You want to line it up in the holes in the slots everything looks good hold this right here bring this cover back over push it down and then you've got your three screws that go into the cover actually got these on Amazon. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a non-affiliated link. Um, I just prefer these. They're like $14 on Amazon. Aside from those $50 and $60 um, expensive tools, these tend to be pretty good for me. So then what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the best location for this ESC, where it's not going to interfere with anything and then we will tighten up some wires. So this has already been cleaned off. I've already got the tape on the bottom. Um, just double-sided tape. This is waterproof. It's double-sided tape. I've never had issues with it before. So then you just wanna find your spot, give it a nice firm press, wiggle it, it's good to go. Then what you're going to want to do is bring your wire for your ESC back over. A little bit of technical difficulties trying to get this through here. So what I did was I just took a pair of dikes and snipped this so I could get it to pry back. It's still fully functional, um, but I needed it out of the way, just a hair. Um, if you look on the receiver, it will tell you positive, negative, and S. And you also have those markings here. These are a little marred up, but you've got negative, positive, and S. And what you want to do is make sure that you get those lined up properly when you go to plug it in. Or you might have an issue with burning something up. Meaning your motor or your ESC could just go... And then you've got no, you've got a, a brick at that point. So we're going to get these wires back through. We want to try to keep them all in their own slots here. And then what we are going to do is put this seal back on that. Remember I said, don't lose this. You need it. Kind of got to stretch it over and get it to sit down in the holes. Bring your cover back over, set it down, and do the opposite and put all three screws back in it.
would like to see how waterproof a lot of these uh, RC cars are. You can follow us and watch some of our videos. We take just about every car we have through the creek, through the mud, and haven't had any issues as long as you maintain your waterproof rating here. Then what I'd like to do is get a zip tie and come back through this hole in the transmission. Pull this up just to hold all these down so they don't get pinched when you put the battery tray back in. Kind of keep them as flat as you can. Come in with some dikes. Get this snipped off. Don't cut your wires because then you're going to be having a bad day. So now all right so we've got that and then you've got your power button aids in the process you can hook it and pull it and what we are going to do with this power button is we are going to come in here and set it right here give it a good push and then with this excess wire i don't want it bounced around and hanging around so I am going to come back in with another zip tie and zip tie it a little bit. plug all that in push it all together battery tray comes back down so all right well here we are that's all put in power buttons in ESC is in, wires are, they could be better. So we don't want to get them tore up. So trick that I've done on my other cars is I'll come in here and I'll pull this body mount. And remember, when you're using brushless in the crawlers, you always want to use censored motors so you don't have any cogging. Um, this is all built in the way that it is. You've got your sensor wire. Um, and we had to solder these wires onto the electronic speed control. And you always want to match A, B, and C on the motor to the ESC don't want to get those mixed up any questions about soldering how we did these i'm gonna leave a link in the description below for the soldering video we've done it on a battery uh swapping out a battery connector it same goes for the uh, esc when you want to solder it down so now let's get a battery in here we're going with the traxxas uh, 3s 5000 fits nicely you've got two sides to the battery tray you've got a 26 millimeter and a 23 the 23 the way that it is is too thick for, or too thin for these thick boys and you'll slide these in then we are going to plug the power up okay and we're going to get the transmitter boom we're back all right so we've got some SEX six tires we had laying around factory wheels and tires because who wants to run the factory wheels and tires? Um, so we're gonna turn this on and see how it goes. Push this power button here. Turn the transmitter on. So the Hobby Wing motor beeps three times, letting you know it's got a 3S LiPo on it. Um, this is a two and 3S capable motor in DSC. You don't wanna go higher than that. So we've got steering, the lockers, transmission and well the throttle I thought this was gonna work but it's apparently not so let's get these out of here and we are going to give this a test run so if you see here the motor is now in reverse so this is the front of the truck and when I hit the trigger forwards it goes backwards and backwards is forwards so now what we're gonna do is um, I will get on my phone and go on the Hobby Wing app because this particular ESC is Bluetooth and I can swap the rotation of the motor um, 
not quite sure how to do it other than that. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but that's the way that we handle it. So I'm gonna get this rotation swapped and I'll be right back. All right, so we've got it. The motor rotation flipped the proper way. So it helps if you turn the transmitter on when you turn the car on, the FYI there, guys. So we've got the steering with that loud, obnoxious factory servo. Oh man. So we've got it fixed now. Forwards is forwards, backwards is backwards with that obnoxious servo again. Um, shift works. Both of the shifting servos for the um, locking differentials work. Um, so that's it. Uh, uh, we're not gonna put the body back on now. We're not going out to test driving it tonight. It's dark outside. Um, the video will be terrible. <clears throat> So in the future, we are going to swap this servo. So give us a like and a follow if you'd like to see us swap the servo out on this. Um, we're also going to a uh, Spectrum receiver so that I can run it on my DX5C. Um, so I've, I've got all my cars on that radio. It's a lot easier than having towed around a bunch of, um, a bunch of different transmitters. It'll hold up to 20 models. Um, so I pretty much swap all of my stuff over. So yeah, uh, give us a like and a follow. We're gonna swap this servo out. We're also gonna show you how to take the uh, locking differentials out. And uh, I prefer full-time lock, less miniature servos to go bad, less garbage you've gotta deal with. So full lock all the time. Um, plus I'm not a big fan of open differentials. I like them locked because I'm trying to rock crawl and trying to go through the mud and I don't wanna have to try to remember, am I locked, am I getting stuck or whatever. So um, always remember to unplug your batteries, never leave the batteries plugged in because it will put a draw on these lipos and you'll end up killing cells and the battery's no good. Um, so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the notification bell um, and uh, you know, follow us and we'll, we'll show you how to tear RC cars apart and make them better than they do come from the factory. Um, and we'll show you how to beat the hell out of them too. I mean, we 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 have all kinds of fun. Uh, you can go through our page and watch us mud bog the big SCX6, the the, the 10 scale SCX103, uh, the TRX4s that we've got a Defender, um, a Defender that's been chopped and mutilated to be a just a mud truck, and uh, all of that fun stuff. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see y'all next time.